Hello everybody, welcome to part three, the final installation on our Ascension of Isaiah as one of the banned or missing books of the Bible. If this is your first time on the channel, first of all, welcome. I'm so, so, so glad you're here. And second of all, you might not want to start with part three um, because you're coming at the tail end of the story. A link to part one and a link to part two will be down in the description box below. Once again, on Tuesdays from 1 to 3 p.m., I am on David Zublick's platform, The Dark Outpost, where we read through these books of the Bible together. Again, it is a live show, so normally there is a phone number available if you would like to call in and contribute to the conversation. Now, David is not on YouTube. He is on BitChute and Rumble, but he also has his own platform. A link to that platform is down in the description box below. Now, I know some of you have joined uh, the Dark Outpost so that you could be a a part of that discussion and I've gotten a lot of message asking me how to find the archived episodes so I'm on every Tuesday so if you go through and find the dates for Tuesdays you'll find my section of the missing books of the Bible David is like a warrior when it comes to doing um, studio work, I should say. I know he worked in radio for a long time, so he's used to recording for many hours. And so he's literally on his channel for, his shows are like three, four hours a show, and he does different segments. So when you're looking at the thumbnails of all of the videos, you might not see me on the thumbnail because some days he has multiple guests on the show. So just look for the Tuesday dates, and that's when you'll find, if you click on the segment you should see or the video you'll you should see like where I'm coming usually I'm my segment on Tuesdays is about an hour into into the show he does about an hour of like the news and stuff and what's going on in the world first current events and then about like an hour in you'll see me come into the show so um, I hope that helps explain it um, I think there's also an email on his on his platform if you need to get in contact with him he can help you out as well and of course, if you have any more other questions, please don't hesitate to ask. All right, so we are picking up with chapter 7. Now, a lot has happened with the ascension of Isaiah. And we know from the book of Isaiah in the Bible that Isaiah, he tends to, when he does his prophecies, he sees his visions when he's writing them down. They're not in like linear order. They kind of go in and out different times. And the book of Isaiah, as well as the ascension of Isaiah, has been one of the most confusing books for people to read. However, us on this channel, we're not just looking at the missing books of the Bible to just look at them. We're looking at them because we're awake and we understand what censorship is and we understand what the church has done. And so we have this 2020 vision of, of the book of Isaiah or the ascension of Isaiah. So it's starting to make more sense to us. But because so much was talked about in the last two parts, I'm not going to do much of a recap. Again, if you're new, please go back and watch part one and part two first before listening to this section so you understand where we are. All right, this brings us to chapter seven. And the vision which Isaiah saw, he told to Hezekiah and to Josab his son and Micaiah and the rest of the prophets and said, at this moment, when I prophesied according to the words, heard which ye heard, I saw a glorious angel, not like unto the glory of the angels which I used to always see, but possessing such glory add position that I cannot describe the glory of the angel. So once more, he is in his ascension process where he's going to see Jesus. He's going to see the different layers of the firmament. Once more, as I said last week, this reminds me a lot of the Apocalypse of Abraham that we studied a couple of books ago. And having seized me by my hand, he raised me on high. And I said to him, Who art thou and what is thy name? And whither art thou raising me on high? For strength was given me to speak with him. And he said unto me, When I have raised thee on high, though the various degrees, and made thee see the vision on account of which I have not been sent, then thou wilt understand who I am, but my name thou does not know. So he's talking to Jesus. We know that Isaiah saw Jesus, but he didn't know who Jesus was because Isaiah lived long before Jesus ever came. Because thou wilt return into thy body, but whither I am raising thee on high, thou wilt see, for this purpose I have been sent. And I rejoice because he spake courteously to me. And he said unto me, Hast thou rejoiced because I have spoken courteously to thee? And he said, And thou wilt see how a greater also that I will speak courteously and peaceably with thee. 
and his father also who is greater thou wilt see. For this purpose have I been sent from the seventh heaven in order to, to explain all these things unto thee. So again, the seventh heaven is also a reference back to the apocalypse of Abraham, where we saw the different like stories or layers of firmament where different entities lived in God's kingdom. And Jesus was in the seventh heaven. Now, people have asked me with these missing books of the Bible, why are they written in Old English? Well, a lot of the academics who first started finding these missing books of the Bible, when they translated them to English, they used Old English because that, at that point, was mirroring the King James Bible. This was before, a lot of this was before the other Bibles had been written, like the NIV. And so it was just an academic decision for these scholars to translate the English edition of these books in Old English. Again, the original of these books was not even written in English at all. So before anybody asked about that, that's the answer to that question. So once again, verse 8, And his father, also who is greater, thou will see. For this purpose, I have been sent from the seventh heaven in order to explain all these things unto thee. And as we ascend to the firmament, I and he, there I saw Samael and his host. Samael is another word for Satan. And there was a great fighting therein, and the angels of Satan were envying one another. And as above, so on the earth, also for the likeness of that which is in the firemen is here on the earth. And I said unto the angel who was with me, What is this war, and what is this envying? And he said unto me, So it has been since the world was made until now, and this war will continue till he whom thou shalt see will come and destroy him. So once again, we saw this last week. Isaiah's prophecy, as I said, it kind of goes back and forth. It's not linear. So he's meeting Jesus. And so he, again, he lived before Jesus. And so he's seeing the prophecy of Jesus coming the first time. But he's also seeing the prophecy of when Jesus will come back the second time which is the world that we're living in now. And afterwards, he caused me to ascend to that which is above the firmament, which is in the first heaven. And there I saw a throne in the midst, and on its right and on its left were angels. And the angels on the left were not like unto the angels who stood on the right. But those who stood on the right had the greater glory, and they all praised with one voice. And there was a throne in the midst, and those who were out he left gave praise after them. But their voice was not such as the voice of those on the right, nor their praise like the praise of those. And I asked the angel who conducted me, and I said unto him, To whom is this praise sent? And he said unto me, It is sent to the praise of he who sitteth in the seventh heaven, to him who rest in the holy world, and to his beloved, whence I have been sent to thee, thither it is sent. And again he made me to ascend to the second heaven, now the height of that heaven is the same as from the heaven to the earth and to the firmament. And I saw there, as in the first heaven, angels on the right and on the left, and a throne in the midst, and the praise of the angels in the second heaven. And he who sat on the throne in the second heaven was more glorious than all the rest. And there was a great glory in the second heaven, and the praise also was not like the praise of those who were in the first heaven. And I fell on my face to worship him, but the angel who conducted me did not permit me. But he said unto me, Worship neither throne nor angel, which belongs to the six heavens. For this cause I was sent to conduct thee, until I tell thee in the seventh heaven. For above all the heavens and their angels has thy throne been placed, and thy garments and thy crown, which thou shalt see. And I rejoiced with great joy, and those who love the Most High and His Beloved will afterward will ascend thither by the angel of the Holy Spirit. And He raised me to the third heaven, and in like the manner I saw those upon the right and upon the left, and there was a throne there in the midst. But the memorial of this world is there unheard of. And I said to the angel who was with me, For the glory of my appearance, was undergoing transformation as I ascended to each heaven in turn. Nothing of the vanity of that world is here named. And he answered me and said unto me, Nothing is named on account of its weakness, and nothing is hidden there of what is done. And I wish to learn how it is known. And he answered me, saying, When I have raised thee to the seventh heaven, 
whence I was sent, so that which is above these, then thou shalt know that there is nothing hidden from the thrones and from those who dwell in the heavens from the angels. And the praise wherewith they praised and glory of him who sat on the throne was great. And the glory of the angels on the right hand on the left was beyond that of the heaven which was below them. So once again, this is very, very much like the apocalypse of Abraham, where he was describing everything he was seeing in different level of the heavens. And there again, I saw those who were on the right and those who were on the left. And him who sat on the throne was in the midst, and there also they were praising. And the praise and the glory of the angels on the right was greater than those on the left. And again, the glory of him who sat on the throne was greater than that of the angels on the right, and their glory was beyond that of those who were below. And he raised me to the fifth heaven. And again, I saw those upon the right hand and on the left, and him who sat on the throne possessing greater glory than those on the fourth heaven. So as y'all are seeing, every time he goes up a level, it's just getting more and more and more and more magnificent. And the glory of those on the right hand was greater than those of the left, from the third to the fourth. And the glory of him who was on the throne was greater than that of the angels on the right hand. And their praise was more glorious than that of the fourth heaven. And I praised him, who is not named and only begotten, who dwelt in the heavens, whose name is not known to any flesh, who has bestowed such glory on the several heaves, and who makes great glory of the angels, and more excellent the glory of him who sitteth on the throne. All right, so this brings us to chapter 8. And again, he raised me into the air of the sixth heaven, and I saw such glory as I had not seen in the five heavens. For I saw angels possessing great glory, and the praise there was holy and wonderful. And I said to the angel who conducted me, What is this which I see, my Lord? And he said, I am not thy Lord, but thy fellow servant. And I asked, and again I asked him, and I said unto him, Why are there not angelic fellow servants on the left? And he said, From the sixth heaven there are no longer angels on the left, nor thrones set in the mist, but they are directed by the power of the seventh heaven, where dwelleth he that is not named, and the elect one, whose name has not been made known, and none of the heavens can learn his name. For it is he alone to whose voice all the heavens and thrones give answers. I have therefore been empowered and sent to raise thee here, that thou mayest see this glory, and that thou mayest see the Lord of all those heavens and these thrones, undergoing successive transformation until he resembles your form and likeness. So again, we're talking about Jesus. I indeed, I indeed say unto thee, Isaiah, no man about to return into a body of the world has ascended or seen what thou seest or perceivest what thou hast perceivest what thou wilt see. For it has been permitted to thee in the lot of the Lord to come hither. And from thence comes the power of the sixth heaven and of the air. And I magnified my Lord with praise and that through his lot I should come hither. And he said, Here furthermore, therefore, this also from thy fellow servant, when from the body by the will of God hast thou hast ascended hither, then thou wilt receive the garment which thou seest, and likewise other numbered garments laid up there thou wilt see. And then thou wilt become equal to the angels of the seventh heaven. And he raised me up into the sixth heaven, and there were no angels on the left, nor throne in the midst. But all had one appearance, and their power of praise was equal. And the power was given to me also, and I also praised along with them, and that angel also, and our praise was like theirs. And there they all named the primal Father and his beloved, the Christ and the Holy Spirit, all with one voice. And their voice was not like the voice of the angels in the five heavens nor like their discourse, but the voice was different there, and there was much light there. And then when I was in the sixth heaven, I thought the light which I had seen in the fifth heaven to become but darkness. And I rejoiced and praised him who hath bestowed such lights on those who wait for his promise. And I besought the angel who conducted me that I should not henceforth return to the carnal world. And I say indeed unto you, Hezekiah and Josab, my son, and Micaiah, that there is much darkness there. And the angel who conducted me discovered that I had thought and said, If in this light thou dost rejoice, 
how much more wilt thou rejoice? When the heaven when the seventh heaven thou seest the light where the Lord is and his beloved. So again, beloved is Jesus. Whence I have been sent, who is to be called the Son in this world. Not yet hath been manifested, he shall be in the corruptible world. And the garments and the thrones and the crowns which are laid upon the righteous. For those who trust in the Lord, who will descend in your form. For the light which there is great and wonderful. And as concerning thy not returning into the body, thy days are not yet fulfilled for coming here. And when I heard that, I was troubled. And he said, do not be troubled. That kind of reminds me. So I've, I've talked about the story before. Uh, my grandfather, my dad's dad, who is no longer with us. But before he passed away the first time, he actually had an in, a near-death experience where he um, saw, he went into a light and he saw Jesus. And anyway, I'm making a very long story short. He basically didn't want to leave. He, didn't want, he told Jesus he didn't want to leave. And Jesus was like, no, you got to go back. It's not your time. And so he went back. But that's basically what happened to my grandfather as well. But we saw Isaiah saying, like, he didn't want to return back to the carnal world, to our world. He wanted to stay there. And the angel was like, no, your, your days aren't done yet. You have to go back. So this brings us to chapter 9. And he took me into the air of the seventh heaven. And moreover, I heard a voice saying, how far will he ascend that dwelleth in the flesh? And I feared and trembled. And when I trembled, beheld, I heard from whence another voice being sent forth and saying, It is permitted to the holy Isaiah to ascend hither from here in his garment. And he, I asked the angel who was with me, and I said, Who is he who forbade me? And who is he who permitted me to ascend? And he said unto me, He who forbade thee is he who is over the praise given of the sixth heaven. And he who permitted thee, this is thy Lord God, the Lord Christ, who will be called Jesus in the world. But his name thou canst not hear till thou hast ascended out of thy body. And he raised me up into the seventh heaven, and I saw there a wonderful light and angels innumerable. And there I saw the holy Abel and all the righteous. So this is a reference back to Cain and Abel. Abel as in the, the son that was um, taken out by Cain. And there I saw Enoch and all who were with them, script of the garments of the flesh. And I saw them in their garments of the upper world. And they were like angels standing there in great glory. And there I saw Enoch and all those who were with them, stripped of the garments of the flesh. And I saw them in their garments in the upper world. And they were like angels standing there in great glory. So verse 8 and verse 9 are the exact same thing. So that's got to be pretty important, right? Like he's recognizing the spirit of people, even though they're not in their flesh anymore. That tells you a lot about our soul. And they sat not on their thrones, nor with their crowns of glory on them. And I asked the angel who was with me, how is it that they have received the garments, but have not thrones and crowns? And he said unto me, crowns and thrones of glory, they do not receive till the beloved will descend in the form in which you will see his descent, which into the world in the last days the Lord who will be called Christ. Nevertheless, they see and know whose will be thrown and who the crowns when he has descended and made in your form, and they will think that he is flesh and is a man. And the God of the world will stretch forth his hand against the sons, the God of the world. We talked about this last week. The God of this world is Lucifer. This is in the canonized Bible too. Until the end of time, until the book of Revelation, the apocalypse, when the contract is over and Lucifer has got to skedaddle and get out of here. So that's what it's saying again in this book. And he said unto me, crowns and thrones of glory they do not receive. Nevertheless, they see and know whose will be thrones and whose will be crowns. When he has descended and been made in your form, and they will think that he is flesh and is a man. So let's read that again, verse 14. And the God of that world will stretch forth his hand against the Son, and they will crucify him on a tree, and they will slay him not knowing who he is. And thus his descent, as you will see, will be hidden even from the heavens, so that will be not be known who he is. And when he hath plundered the angel of death, he will ascend on the third day, and he will remain in that world 545 days. And the many of the righteous will ascend with him, whose spirits do not receive their garments, till the Lord Christ ascend, and they ascend with him. Then indeed they will receive their garments and thrones and crowns, and he will ascend into the seventh heaven. And I said unto him that which I have asked him in the third heaven, 
show me how everything which is done in that world is here made known. And whilst I am still speaking with him, behold, one of the angels who stood nigh, more glorious than the glory of the angel who had raised me up from the world, showed me a book, but not as a book of this world. And he opened it, and the book was written but not as a book of this world. And he gave it to me, and I read it. And lo, the deeds of the children of Israel were written therein, and the deeds of those whom I know not, my son Josab. And I said, In truth, there is nothing hidden in the seventh heaven, which is done in this world. And I saw there were many garments laid up, and many thrones, and many crowns. And I said to the angel, Whose are these garments, and thrones, and crowns? And he said unto me, These garments many from that world will receive, believing in the words of that one, who shall be named, as I told thee. And they will observe those things, and believe in me, and believe in his cross. For them these are laid up. And I saw a certain one standing, whose glory surpassed that of all, and his glory was great and wonderful. And after I had seen him, all the righteous whom I had seen, and also the angels of whom I had seen come to him, and Adam, and Abel, and Seth, and all the righteous first drew near and worshipped him. And they all praised him with one voice. And I myself also gave praise with them, and my giving of praise was theirs. And then all the angels drew nigh and worshipped and gave praise. And I was again transformed and became like an angel. And thereupon the angel who conducted me said to me, Worship this one, and I worshipped and praised. And the angel said unto me, This is the Lord of all the praise givings which thou hast seen. And whilst he was speaking, I saw another glorious one who was like him. And the righteous drew nigh and worshipped and praised, and I praised together with them, but my glory was not transformed into accordance with their form. And thereupon the angel drew near and worshipped him. And I saw the Lord and the second angel, and they were standing. And the second whom I saw was on the left of the Lord, and I asked, Who is this? And he said unto me, Worship him, for he is the angel of the Holy Spirit, who speaketh in thee and the rest of the righteous. So it's almost like he's seeing the Trinity, right? The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I saw the great glory, the eyes of my spirit being open, and I could not thereupon see, nor yet could the angel who was with me, nor all the angels who I had seen worshiping my Lord. But I saw the righteous beholding with great power the glory of the one. And my Lord drew nigh to me and the angel of the spirit. And he said, see how it is given to thee to see God. And on thy account, power is given to the angel who is with thee. And I saw how my Lord and the angel of the spirit worshiped and they both together praised God. And thereupon all the righteous drew near and worshiped and the angels drew near and worshiped and the angels praised. Bring us to chapter 10. This is the final chapter of the ascension of Isaiah. And thereupon I heard the voices and the giving of praise, which I had heard in each of the sixth heavens, ascending and being heard there. And all were being sent up to that glorious one whose glory I could not behold. And I myself was hearing and beholding the praise which was given to him. And the Lord and the angel of the spirit were beholding all and hearing all. And all the praises which were set up from the sixth heaven are not only heard but seen. And I heard the angel who conducted me, and he said, This is the most high of the high ones, dwelling in the holy world and resting in his holy one, who will be called by thy Holy Spirit through the lips of the righteousness of the Father of the Lord. And I heard the voice of the most high, the Father of my Lord, saying to my Lord Christ, who will be called Jesus, Go forth and descend through the heavens, and thou wilt descend to the firmament and to the world, to the angels in Sheol, or hell, thou wilt descend, the Hagul, thou wilt not go. And thou wilt become like unto the likeness of all who are in the five heavens. And thou wilt be careful but to come like the form of the angels of the firmament. And the angels also who are in Sheol are hell. And none of these angels of the world shall know that thou art with me in the seven heavens and their angels. And they shall not know that thou art with me till the loud voice I have called to the heavens. And their angels and their light even unto the sixth heaven in order that you mayest judge and destroy the princes and angels and gods of that world and the world that is dominated by them. For they have denied me and said, We alone are, and there is none beside us. And afterwards, from the angels of death, thou wilt ascend to thy place, and thou wilt not be transformed in each heaven, but in glory wilt thou ascend and sit on my right hand. 
and thereupon the princes and powers of that world will worship thee. These commandments I heard the great glory given to my Lord. And so I saw my Lord go forth from the seventh heaven into the sixth heaven. And the angels who conducted me from this world was with me and said unto me, Understand Isaiah, and see this transformation and descent of the Lord will appear. And I saw when the angels saw him, thereupon those in the sixth heaven praised and lauded him. For he had not been transformed after the shape of the angel there, and they praised him, and I also praised them. And I saw when he descended into the fifth heaven, that in the fifth heaven he made himself like unto the form of the angels there. And they did not praise him nor worship him, for his form was like unto theirs. And then he descended into the fourth heaven and made himself like unto the form of the angels there. So as he goes down, he's manifesting into the images of what they see in that realm of reality, that dimension of reality, which is how he came as Jesus into our realm of reality, appearing as a man. And when they saw him, they did not praise nor loud him, for his form was like unto their form. And again I saw when he descended into the third heaven, and he made himself like unto the form of the angels in the third heaven. And those who kept the gates of the third heaven demanded the password, and the Lord gave it to them in order that he should not be recognized. And when they saw him, they did not praise or loud him, for his form was like unto their form. And again I saw him when he descended into the second heaven, and again he gave the password there. Those who kept the gate proceeded to demand and the Lord to give. And I saw when he made himself like unto the form of the angels in the second heaven. And they saw him, and they did not praise him, for his form was like unto their form. And again I saw when he descended into the first heaven, and there also he gave the passwords to those who kept the gates. And he made himself like unto the form of the angels who were on the left of that throne, and they neither praised nor lauded him, for his form was like unto their form. But as for me, no one asked me on account of the angel who conducted me. But he again descended into the firement, where dwelleth the ruler of the world. So that's Lucifer. And he gave the password to those on the left. And his form was like theirs, and they did not praise him there. But they were envying one another, fighting. For there is power of evil, and envying about trifles. And I saw when he descended that he made himself like unto the angels of the air, and he was like one of them. And he gave no password. For one was plundering and do violent, doing violence to another. All right, guys, that brings us to chapter 11. Sorry, I thought chapter 10 was the last chapter, but I guess chapter 11 is. So let's get into chapter 11. After this, I saw the angel who spoke with me, who conducted me and said unto me, Understand Isaiah, son of Amos, for this purpose I have been sent from God. And indeed, I saw a woman of the family of David the prophet named Mary. She was a spouse to a man named Joseph. A carpenter and he also was the seed of the family of the righteous David of Bethlehem and he came into his lot and when she was espoused she was found with child and after two months of days while Joseph was in his house and Mary his wife but both alone it came to pass when they were alone that Mary straight away looked with her eyes and saw a small babe and she was astonished and after she had been astonished her womb was found as formerly before she had conceived and when her husband Joseph said unto her, What has astonished thee? His eyes were opened and saw the infant and praised God, because into his portion God had come. And the voice came to them, Tell, tell this vision to no one. And the story regarding the infant was noise broad in Bethlehem. Some said, the Mar Mary hath borne a child before she was married two months. And many says, She has not borne a child, nor has a midwife gone up to her. Nor have we heard the cries of labor pains. And they were all blindedly respecting him, and they were all new regarding him, though they knew not whence he was. So that's interesting. So she was only pregnant for like two months. That's the first time I've heard that. But I guess it was kind of like the baby just popped out. That's kind of how I read it. What do you guys think? So it definitely was a very different delivery, even though we know he came through as a man. And they took him and went to Nazareth in Galilee. And I saw, O Ezekiel, and Joseph my son, and I declare to the other prophets also who were standing by that this hath escaped all the heavens and all the princes and all the gods of this world. And I saw in Nazareth he sucked the breast as a babe and as a custom, customary in order that he might not be recognized. 
When he had grown up, he worked great signs and wonders in the land of Israel and Jerusalem. And after this adversary envied him and roused the children of Israel against him, not knowing who he was, they delivered him to the king and crucified him, and he descended to the angels of hell. In Jerusalem, indeed, I was him being crucified on a tree. And likewise, after the third day, rise again, remain days. And the angel who conducted me said, Understand, Isaiah. And I saw he sent out his apostles and ascended. And I saw him, and he was in the firemen, but he had not changed himself into their form. And all the angels of the firemen and Satan saw him, and they worshipped. And there was much sorrow there while they had said, How did our Lord descend into our midst? And we perceive not the glory which has been upon him, which we see has been upon him for the sixth heaven. And he ascended into the second heaven, that he will not transform himself. But all the angels who were on the right hand and the left hand thrown in the midst, both worshipped him and praised him. How did our Lord escape us whilst descending, and we perceived not? And in like manner he ascended into the third heaven, and they praised and said in like manner. And in the fourth heaven and in the fifth they also, they said precisely after the same manner. But there was one glory, and from it he did not change himself. And I saw when he ascended into the sixth heaven, and they worshipped and glorified him. But in all the heavens they praised increased in one value. And I saw how he ascended into the seventh heaven, and all the righteous and all the angels praised him. And when I saw him sit down on the right hand of great glory, whose glory I told you that I could not behold, and also the angel of the Holy Spirit I was sitting on the left hand, and this angel said unto me, Isaiah, son of Amos, it is enough for thee, for thou hast seen that no child of flesh has seen. And thou wilt return into thy garment of flesh until thy days are complicated. Then thou wilt come hither. These things Isaiah saw and told unto all that stood before him, and they praised. And he spake to Hezekiah the king, and said, I have spake these things, both the end of the world. And all this vision will be consummated in the last generations. Isaiah made himself swear that he would not tell it to the people of Israel, nor give these words to any man to, to transcribe. Such things ye will read, and watch ye in the Holy Spirit, in order that ye may receive your garments and thrones and crowns of glory, which are laid upon the seventh heaven. On account of these visions and prophecies, Samuel, Satan, saw in sunder Isaiah, the son of Amos, the prophet by the hand of Manasseh. And all these things Hezekiah delivered to Manasseh in twenty-sixth year. But Manasseh did not remember them, nor place these things in his heart, but became the servant of Satan, who was destroyed. Here endeth the vision of Isaiah the prophet with his ascension. So that was super interesting. Again, very much resembles the apocalypse of Abraham. And once again, reiterating the point that for the last, what, 6,000 years or so, Lucifer has been the god of this world. And now the apocalypse is coming, and that's when God will... Get rid of Lucifer so that God can reign again. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts on that. I will let you guys know what our next book is. I'm debating between two books right now. Um, next week, I'm going to be on vacation. I've got some videos that I've got planned to put up for you guys while I'm on vacation. But because I will not be on the Dark Outpost next week because I'll be away, uh, there won't be a, an introduction to a no, new book next week. It will be the week after next. And once again, once I figure out which book we're going to do next, I will put that on the community board for those who are getting the material before we start the material. We'll have an opportunity to go and do that before we actually start the new book. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.